Hello and welcome to uh, Wednesday afternoon prayer meeting. We'll be getting started in just a moment. I, uh, I'm just going to check the technology here and then get started. But thank you for joining me. And we're going to be uh, looking today, if you want to get a head started, at Isaiah chapter 26, verses 3 and 4. So if you just want to give me a thumbs up and let me know that uh, everything is working out, that'd be super. And we'll uh, get started here in just a moment. All right. And we're doing this Wednesday night prayer meeting in the morning, or actually in the afternoon, because this evening we have a men's group. So wanted to make sure that um, we were able to have our meeting here uh, this afternoon because we have a lot of prayers that we need to share. And so um, doing it from my work office today, so it's a much different uh, background for you than you're used to. So anyway, I uh, appreciate you joining me. Uh, my name is uh, Pastor Don Mast with Altoona First Southern Baptist Church located at 903 North 4th Street in uh, Juniata. And I welcome you to Wednesday prayer meeting. And I'm thankful that you're uh, watching or listening today as you're scrolling. And, you know, this is, a again, a different time for us because we're having our church men's fellowship tonight at Prime Sirloin at 6 o'clock. And so I, uh, I, hope that, uh, I hope that you don't mind that we're... Uh, praying a little early for you today. So um, if you'll turn with me in your Bible, um, my Bible, I got it here with me, let me grab it. You know, this is, this is my guide. This is my light. This is my friend, my armor. Uh, it's lived, it's beloved. And we're going to look this morning or I keep saying this morning, we're at noon. We're going to look at uh, Isaiah, uh, chapter 26, verses 3 and 4. So if you'll turn there and join me, that'll be great. Isaiah, chapter 26, verses 3 and 4. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Turn in the Lord's way, for the Lord God is the eternal rock. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word today. And so what I want to talk to you today about is, is keeping your eyes on God and fixing your attention on him. And so there was an old pastor back in the late 1800s who told this story of riding in a horse-drawn carriage in the Scotland Highlands region. And there was this huge narrow mountain ledge. It was like a more like a cliff. And one of the horses startled, you know, became startled and the driver fearing that they would plummet to their death off of the cliff repeatedly repeatedly flicked his whip towards the horse. And after they made the pass, the danger, you know, was gone. And the pastor asked the driver, the, the uh, carriage driver, why did he use the whip in such for, you know, with such force? And his response was, you know, I needed to get the horses to think about something else, to change their minds. He said, I needed to get their attentions. And so in the world that we live in today, in our world, it's overflowing with temptations and, and all this garbage that wants our attention, uh, threats and dangers all around us. And we all need something else to hold our attention and to hold our heart's focus. And we are also reminded in, I think it's Second Timothy version, or Second Timothy verses three, uh, or Second Timothy chapter three, verses one through four, that people, um, need to change focus and people will change focus. They will be lovers of themselves and focus on themselves. And you should know this, you know, Timothy, uh, it, that in the last days, there will be very difficult times 
For people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful. They will be proud. They will be scoffing or, you know, uh, 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 making fun of or, you know, uh, just ridiculing God. They will be disobedient to their parents. They will be ungrateful. They will consider nothing at all sacred. And they will be unloving, unloving and unforgiving. And they will be slanderers, you know, and they will slander others and have no self-control whatsoever. They will be cruel and they will hate. And they will hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless. They will be puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than loving our God. And so today we need more than ever before, more than ever before, the um, mental distraction, the heart distraction. What we need most is to fasten our minds upon a reality more powerful than all of our fears. As Isaiah told us, and as he told God's people in Judah, what we truly need is to fix our minds on God. You will keep in perfect peace, Isaiah promises, all who trust in you. And we can trust in the Lord always, for the Lord God is, as we said in that verse, the eternal rock. So peace, this is the gift for all who fix their gaze on him. And his peace provides far more than simply a technique for holding our worst thoughts at bay. For those who surrender their, their future, their hopes, all their worries, their fears, the Spirit makes an entirely new way of life possible for each one of us. You know, for many of us, life may have a spinning or feeling overwhelmed. But you can trust this, that no matter what chaos you're facing, God's got you. Just keep your mind focused on him and he'll guide you to pure peace. And remember, he's your solid rock, your solid foundation, always there to steady you when you're dealing with life struggles. So take a deep breath and trust in him and know that he'll see you through, know that he'll be by your side. I promise you that. And so today I ask her, are, are you focused on Jesus today? What is keeping your attention? What is occupying your time? You know, is it some certain kind of music? Or are you streaming a, a, a long series on Netflix and that has, you, that has your mind, that has your heart? What you consume, okay, listen to me carefully. Keep in mind, you are changed by the books you read, the music you listen to, the media you consume, those things that you allow into your heart and into your mind, what you consume, right? So listen carefully here. Read carefully, watch carefully, and always read scripture before anything else. So, you know, it's garbage in, garbage out, right? So we want to keep those things that are beautiful, those things that are of God, focused. So where do you normally fix your attention? You know, how might you renew your gaze, your focus on him? While you are scrolling this afternoon, you are not here by mistake or by accident. Our Father, our Lord, wanted you here today to hear this word, to hear his word. And so, if I may ask, how was your walk with Jesus? I mean, you can have religion or you can say you're religious, but not know Jesus. It's about having that personal relationship with Jesus. That's all that matters. That's all that counts. What's between you and him? And you might have gone to church or maybe not. Faith is not some sterile religion, it's a relationship. And so, have you heard the good news? 
If you haven't decided, if you've never decided to follow Jesus, I want to invite you to do that now. You are not too dirty for for God to cleanse you. You are not too broken for God to fix. You are not too far for God to reach, and you are not too guilty for God to forgive. And also, you are not too worthless for God to love. And I'm thankful for that. And so, I want to tell you a quick story before we go into prayer. It's the story of the good news, the good news of Jesus. And this is a short story, but it's a true story. It is straightforward. It's directly from the Bible. So it's very, very simple. Jesus came, and we can find it right here. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. His, he is the Messiah, the Lord. That's Luke chapter 2, verse 11. And so he came. Why did he come? He came to that which was his own but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. That's John chapter one, verse 11. And so Jesus died. Why? He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. That's 1 Peter. And so why did he go through all that? Why did he die? He died for all who have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And so then he arose. He arose on that third day. He said, don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus of Nazarene who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See that place where they laid him. That's Mark 16. And so why did he rise? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. That's Romans 6. And so Jesus ascended or went to heaven. So after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and the clouds hid him from from their sight. And so why did he ascend? He said this, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. That's John chapter 14, verse 3. And then finally, Jesus is coming back. And you can find it in Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. And so why is he coming back? Why is he coming back for us? For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's Romans chapter 10, verse 13. He came, he died, he arose, he ascended, and he will return again. It's the good news of Jesus Christ. It's a simple truth. It's an easy story. It's a wonderful story to understand. It is the good news. And... You know, I told you today, this morning, earlier, that this is your opportunity to make the most important decision that you're ever going to make. You know, our lives are short. We are not guaranteed another minute. We're not guaranteed another day, another breath. The Bible says that our life is but a vapor appearing for a short time and then passing away. Each one of our days are numbered. How can you have this relationship with Jesus? How can you have this personal relationship, you're probably wondering? Well, first you have to have a change of mind and a change of heart. Turn away from sin. Those things that are keeping you away from Jesus, all that garbage that you have built up around you that you would rather look at instead of looking in the Bible and looking to things that are of of the Lord. So he alone is the way and the truth and the life, as it says in John chapter 14. And Romans 10 says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So if you want to change your life, if you want to have new purpose, if you want to have true joy and true peace and true love, decide for Jesus right now. And the Bible also tells us to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Or maybe, you know, maybe you've been adrift. Maybe you know Jesus. Maybe you had a relationship. 
but you've drifted away from him or you or you say you're angry with him come back to him today he will never reject you his arms are waiting so if you're ready to place your faith and your hope in Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, I ask that you sincerely pray this prayer for me in your own words right now. Will you join me in prayer? Father God, I know that I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness and I believe Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sins and that you raised him to life. Lord, I wanna trust him as my savior and follow him as Lord from this day forward. Father, guide my life and help me to do your will. Keep all of the sin out of my life, Lord. Keep, keep me away from all those things. I pray this in the name of Jesus, amen. So if you've made a decision to follow Jesus, if you've prayed that prayer and you still have questions, this is really the beginning of your journey. I'd love to talk with you about it. You could stop by our church this Sunday or you can comment or message below or send me a direct message. And I'd love to be able to talk with you and help you with your next steps on this journey and having that personal relationship with Jesus. And so will you join me right now uh, in prayer? That's what we do every Wednesday, and I encourage you, if you could, to, to grab a pen and a pencil. That way you can write down all of these uh, friends and family members and folks that, uh, that need prayer in our community. So will you join me in prayer? Father God, we learned today that we need to stay focused on you and not to be distracted by the world. Sometimes our minds can be a scary place sometimes and we fear so much and we have anxiety and Lord I just ask that you bring us your peace and Lord tonight we lift up all of those or right now Lord we lift up all of those in our church family and beyond who are facing sickness who are facing medical challenges Lord we pray for your healing touch we pray for you to reach each one restoring them to health and reminding them of your love and hope and pour out your comfort and peace and strength upon them, Lord, and also to their families, Lord, and grant the doctors, Lord, grant them and the nurses the wisdom that they need, the medical team that you grant them the wisdom that they need and they're guiding, uh, guide their hands to work and mend our bodies and spirit. And Lord, you are the great physician, the master healer. In your name, we place our faith in our trust. And so, Lord, this morning we lift up Anthony English, Lord, um, and also his wife, Polly. We need some urgent prayer, Lord, and we just lift him up to you. Brother Anthony had a wonderful phone conversation with him yesterday, Lord, and we learned that he's going to have some medical testing, some biopsying, uh, getting some biopsies and we just lift him up to you. We lift up his wife to you during this time. Lord, we know that you're a great physician, that you can heal whatever it is. You can make these biopsies negative, and we pray for strength and peace right now as he is going through this journey. And, and Lord, um, we just lift him and his family up to you, Lord. And also Mark Biter for the tumors on his spine and 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 lord we lift up peach and her family her grandson hazen and her brother woody and uh, carrie and kevin prusnak and lord we just ask for continued healing for carrie and her back and linda fuller and also uh, her son john and her husband uh, dave and then also audra and uh, uh, linda's niece and we lift up Scott Beck uh, for health issues that he's been facing, Lord, and Cookie DiStefano, who is still dealing with uh, issues with her knees, Lord. She's in the, the, uh, the, the nursing center right now, Lord, and she has surgery coming up soon, Lord. And we just ask that you wrap your love around her. And we lift up Darlene Blunt Smeek for her issues with her chest and uh, continued recovery from COVID, Lord. And also, Lord, this morning, uh, here we lift up uh, Stacy Miller Singer, who, Lord, she's beginning a new job, a new career, and we just ask that you lift her up, Lord, as you put a hedge of protection over her route while she's driving um, the great distance to her new position, Lord, and give her the wisdom and the energy to keep up the, with the pace 
and a sense of peace and calm to beat any anxiety down that she has, Lord. And Lord, we lift up Becca Miller, Becca Miller, who's also starting a new career, a new job, a new path, Lord. And Carrie B and her kids and her family and Tyler Magaha and his family. And Lord, we lift up Edie Elizabeth Johnson Lowe and her family um, here. And also Vicki Snyder and April Snyder and Deb Stell and their entire family. And Lord, we lift up John Rudisill and his wife, Linda, and their entire family, and Joe Biddle and his wife, and their son, Joshua, and Rose Morrow and her family. We just lift her up to you, Lord. We just ask you surround her with love and peace and calm and your comfort. And the McGee family, Warren and Holly and the kids, and my cousin Tina and her husband, Jose, and the kids, Dean Branda and his wife, and the Barry family, Ralph and Christine and Tyler and Braden and Jordan, we lift every one of them up to you today, Lord. And Pastor Paul and Cindy Johnson and their family and their kids and grandkids. And Lord, we lift up Joshua Jacobs and his family and Aaron Bomeis on her son, Daquan, and their family. And Lord, I can't stress it enough, Brother Anthony English and his wife, Polly, and his entire family. And Vincent Mukul and his wife, Lillian, and baby Lorenzo and Castro in Oakland. And the entire DeStefano family, we lift them up to you today. And Dave and Linda and First Baptist Church of Seward, Pastor Rex, Pastor Rick Miller and their families and Lawrence and Kayla Rissler and their family. And Lord, I lift up my wife, Angelina. I lift up my son, uh, Elliot, and his new journey, Lord. And I lift up uh, his fiance, Becca, and the entire Miller family in Texas, Lord. I lift them up to you. And today, Lord, we also pray for our community, for our nation, and our world, Lord. We lift up our neighbors and our families, asking for your blessing and guidance in their lives. We lift up our, mi our missionaries. We pray for their safety and success as they spread your light and your message and serve others, both here and abroad. And Lord, we pray for Europe, and we pray for Israel, and we pray for the Ukraine. Everything that's going on right now, Lord, all of the wars and conflicts and rumors of wars, we just lift them up to you, and we lift up our military families as, while they defend and protect and serve, Lord. And also for our nation. Lord, we're going through some elections, Lord, soon, and we just ask for wisdom and, and that righteousness, um, we seek that righteousness in our leaders and a renewed sense of unity and purpose. And finally, Lord, a spiritual awakening for our community. We hunger for a return to faith in your teaching, Lord. Help us to, to, to leave behind harmful ways and guide our families back to you. And Lord, we lift up finally our church family. We continue, you know, we, we continue to seek your blessings, your spiritual growth we, we, and well-being for each and every member of our church. And finally, Lord, help us to look back and thank you for your goodness. We are so thankful for you. And Lord, we never want to presume that, your, that our past goodness, you know, our, your past goodness, or, you know, we forgot, you know, your mercies, Lord, we have not. But instead, Lord, lead us to repentance. Lead us to focusing more on you. Lead us to, you know, the appointments, the divine appointments where we can share your love and share your light every single day. And help us to make you the center of our lives. Thank you for your, your unfailing love and answer to our prayers. And we trust in your grace to lighten our burdens, to fill us with your peace, and to strengthen our hope and faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I want to, before closing, I just want to thank you for, for this time where we can pray together. I'm always so thankful for Wednesdays. I'm always so thankful for this time together. And I'm thankful for all of the people that are in my life and uh, helping with our ministry and our church. And I encourage you to come and visit us out in a First Southern Baptist Church where you are family. We're located at 903 North 4th Street in Altoona. And our services start every Sunday at 1045. And you never have to worry about dressing up. You just come as you are and you can bring a friend or a neighbor. And, you know, we have lots of breakfast food in the back, snacks and coffee and orange juice and stuff like that. And uh, I also encourage you to write to us. 
We love getting your letters. So drop us a line. You can either go to our website, a1sbc.org, or we love snail mail as well. So you can send it to Pastor Don at 903 North 4th Street, Altoona, Pennsylvania, 16601. And thinking about our website, you can also go there to learn more about our mission, what we're trying to do, spreading the word of God, helping people to develop a personal relationship with Jesus and strengthening their faith journey. We're all about reaching the lost and equipping the saved, just like Jesus told us to do in the Great Commission. And our church has been serving our community since 1911. So whether you're a seasoned believer or just curious, feel free to come visit us this Sunday. We're going to be talking about Zacchaeus. And so I hope you'll join us this Sunday. You know, we're, you know, we're a family who believe in, you know, the Bible, who believe in Jesus, our Father, who believe in serving our community. So join us every Sunday, 1045, and feel the joy of Christ's message fill your heart. Thank you so much for joining me for prayer meeting today. I hope you have a great rest of the week. May God bless you. Take care.